This is Level Up Success Podcast with Neth and Truth. Hey, would you like to share more about that relationship? Well, I would like to um, share a little bit about it. Actually, I... Um, I didn't realize that I was in a toxic relationship until I was speaking to my son many years later when he was in his 20s. And my son told me that, Mom, I felt your energy when we were younger. I felt that you were upset and you were sad and you were hiding it from us. And I didn't realize that they saw that. I figured that because I hid it so well that and I... We had a nice home. We had the house. We had the car. They had their own room. I was always able to um, give them whatever they needed. We had vacations, but I was in a toxic relationship. I was in a codependent relationship, and I was the giver, and he was the taker. And I kind of lost myself. And with losing myself, I was um, kind of a little depressed and felt sad. And I try to hide that from my children, but no, they saw it. They feel it. The children can feel it. They feel your energy. They know when there's something wrong. Okay, okay. Um, what would like? I, I don't know if you feel comfortable sharing this, but what would be like the the roles where that it, it kind of felt that you know, like he was being um, like I guess the taker. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the well, the taker is I was the giver. I was the caretaker. I was the one that took care of the kids. I worked full time. When I came, when I picked them up from, I worked full time and then I picked them up from school. I brought them home. I made dinner. I took them to karate. I took them to dance. By the time the end of the day came, I was exhausted. I had no more energy for them. And that was, I was the giver. I was doing everything. And he really wasn't contributing in the taking care of the home. He was contributing with money he was the dad he would of course he would help pay the bills but then he felt that um a lot of the other things were i should have been done by me and at that point i should have spoken up and i should have said no but i wanted to be this super mom i wanted i wanted just to i could do it i could do it i could do it and that's not a good thing because in the end of the day you have nothing left to give your children okay okay oh so it, i mean we could say we could say that in in that sense because you do you are bec you do want to become the giver you're the one that want to uh, you want to give all this to your children and you know like and this is going on with uh, Oh, you um, well, with your husband, you said that you, you didn't even recognize it at the time. I didn't recognize it because of the fact that it's, uh, it's a cycle. I okay. saw my mother do the same thing, and my mother's mother did the same thing. You know, we're raised to believe that the women are the ones that have to raise the children. The women are the ones that have to do the groceries and the laundry. And even though I had a full-time job, I felt that that was also my job. So okay. when I came out of a 9 to 5, I came home too cook and clean and the children what they really wanted is they want a mom that they can sit down with and get to know to enjoy and a lot of times i was exhausted okay all right no i i understand but so because what i what i understand as well i mean and, and i know that we are raised i was, I was like thinking, you know you know we are raised in a certain way so i i get what you're saying as far as that um and because you didn't understand what you was feeling at the time, the the, the communication between you and, and your husband wasn't really... There was a lot of resentment in my part. Yeah. There was a lot of resentment and I couldn't understand why. Okay. Because, of course, I didn't realize that I was co in a codependent relationship until I started doing research. And I so, yeah, this is it. Okay. I, um, I didn't realize that I was so sad that I was so tired. I didn't realize. I thought that, like I said, I thought that by giving my kids the the house, the white picket fence, the yeah. car, the vacations, they were taking karate, they were taking dance. I figured that I was better than I, my parents were. Yeah. That yeah. I the, the American dream. Okay. But I was just exhausted in I the mean, end of the I day. I don't think you could really blame yourself because I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's the way that we were raised, that the female... Supposed to be the main girl giver. The male supposed to be the one providing with the money. But I was providing the money yeah. also. Oh, See, wow. I work nine to five. So I, I work and I make really good money. 
and I still came home and I still was like a single like a no, like a single mom. No, yeah. I understand that part, but you still had that mentality because that's how you like you say since you saw your mom doing that, your yes. grandma. Yes. And I think we teach our community teach that to our children yes. without even realizing they doing that. Yes. That's yeah. one of the reasons she didn't even notice after I your miss. son well, told well, we you. We have to teach our children, especially our um, male children is that cooking and cleaning those are life skills those are life skills that everybody has to know yeah you you don't wait to meet someone and have a wife to take care of you that is not a partner that's a slave that is not a partner so it, you have to teach your children life skills and a lot of times we don't teach our male children this we teach the girls we tell the girls, you're supposed to cook. The, you're supposed to cook. You're supposed to clean. These yeah. are the things. You, and then the girls get into a relationship where they're also codependent. They're taking care of someone. Yeah. So th this is um the the belief that I have, and, and you know I agree with with a lot of points that you're making. Um. So what I believe is that once you you know like we we're in an age where you know we we do go on a lot of dates. I'm not gonna say that I'm all for going to like a lot of dates because it's kind it, when you go on dates what i've learned is that it kind of teaches you on how to like walk away yes you know like so it's good and bad depending on the situation yes uh, so but, but what i feel is that when you're on on a date that all these things should be communicated within yes. the dates yes. so th these are so this is where you find the foundation so okay this is what I want for my future, you know, like, are you on board? And then once that communication is set, then, you know, now when you're walking into the relationship, that, you know, uh, whatever was communicated while you were on dates, it has to be practiced while while in the relationship. Yes. So, you know, like, so in that aspect, I agree with it. And that's why I'm saying, like, there was a, a there was that lack of communication, but it was because of you didn't understand what you was feeling yes. at I, that precise point in there time. Was, there was there was no communication because I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. when I was raised, I was raised to do as I was told. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I should set boundaries. Yeah. Boundaries for my mental health, for my emotional health, for my physical. Yeah. And boundaries are very important. And I, I didn't know that. I didn't I I never learned it. So when I went into the relationship, I didn't set boundaries. Exactly. And yeah, yeah. my kindness was taken for weakness. Yeah. The more I did, the more was expected. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The more I that was expected. It. And I didn't know how to say no. And I also, to me, the more I did and the more I felt that I was worth something. It's like a drug sometimes. It's yeah, like a yeah. drug addict that they need drugs. A codependent person needs someone to take care of. Mm -hmm. And that's that's toxic. I don't now that I'm not in this relationship anymore. I don't blame the person I was in the relationship with. I don't blame him for anything that he did because of the fact that I allowed it. Yeah, I allowed it Exactly. because okay. I didn't know. But now I know better. And um, now I look back and I learned how to set boundaries. All right. So that's the next thing I want to talk about. How, how were you able to? to switch from how were you able to first recognize it like what happened that you recognized it and then like what do you do to move forward well i recognized it because when i left that relationship and i was on my own i didn't know how to make decisions for myself i didn't know i i, I just i needed someone to validate me yeah validate who i was and i thought to myself this is terrible this is terrible. I, I, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to make decisions on my own. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I decided I should make a change. So I started l looking deep in within. And I, I was holding a lot of animosity towards my, my ex-husband, yes. blaming him. Oh, he was a terrible husband. He didn't help me. He didn't do anything. And, and actually, that's toxic also. Yes. <laughs> At that point, I had to let it go and say, you know, you, you, um, you have a little bit of blame in this also because you allowed it. If he would have known that there were um, repercussions for things that he did, maybe he wouldn't have done it. Yeah. I believe that, um, like, so this, what I'm going to say now, it, it may be the hardest thing for certain people to hear, right? I understand that people get to certain circumstances, right? You know, like um, 
a lot worse than what you know like when you that you went through you have to at some point hold yourself accountable not because you're to blame completely but you cannot you won't be able to shred the burden until you you know like you forgive. Yes. You got to forgive the yes. person. Yes. And then after that, you got to forgive him for yourself. Understand the situation. Yes. Now, how do I move on? Definitely. There was a yeah. lot of, um, there was a lot of jealousy in the relationship. Mm -hmm. A lot of insecurities and a lot of trust issues. And that was really traumatizing for me. And now, I had, that was something that I had to, to learn I, I didn't want to bring that I wanted to get into another relationship of course I was I started thinking about manifesting okay, manifesting yeah. but I had to work on myself first and so okay so I'm going to tell you my story on how I manifested my uh, my now fiance All right, awesome. which um, <laughs> I, I'm really excited about yeah so okay so I was in a place where I, I was in a good place actually I was by myself I was in a good place and I was coming to terms with the fact that, yes, I am responsible for a lot of things that happened to me. And I didn't know how to set boundaries. And the first time that the person tells you that they don't trust you, that, you're, that they believe that you're with someone else and you're not, your job is not to convince them. Your job is to walk away. That is your job. You can't convince somebody of, of something that they believe in their mind. And I never did that. And through the years in my previous relationship, I allowed certain things when I should have just walked away. I really should have, because it's, it's actually degrading. The fact that you would think that someone is capable of certain things, that means that they hold very little regards for you, for who you are as a person. Yeah. And I should have been insulted, but I wasn't. I just wanted to prove that I am good. I wanted to prove that. No, 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 no. People are good. People don't always do that. I'm going to prove to you that, no, I'm not unfaithful. But the more I did that, the more the mistrust was there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So true. when I saw one, um, I decided I forgave my ex. I forgave my ex. And I felt better. And I decided I, wanted, I think I'm ready for a new relationship. I, I love myself. And I saw one part of it, but I think that it could be beautiful. So I decided to, I was listening to a podcast, actually. Okay. And the <laughs> podcast was amazing. And I was listening to someone and he said that if you want to manifest something, surround yourself with it. Believe that you have it. And I said, okay, let's see. I can do this. I was in my house by myself and I took this piece of paper out and I wrote down. I want to manifest my future husband. And I wrote down, my future husband is, he's there. I have my future husband and we're engaged and he is amazing. He has this great sense of humor. He's always making me laugh and he does not have trust issues. He really um, values the time that we have together. He's a dancer because I dance and, you know, that's very important to me. Mm -hmm, that's one of my yeah. passions, as Nate knows. Um, and he has to dance. He... Rosa's a phenomenal dancer, by the way. Oh, guys. thank you very yeah. much. I love it. I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wrote down I wrote down this this whole list, this big list on he has to be family oriented. He has to um love my family he had a great sense of humor and um he wants to be with me but he trusts me no insecurities and i put this paper on my nightstand and then i went online and i googled i wanted a picture frame for my room and i googled this frame and i found this great frame that i love and it's called the hug and this is this man and this woman hugging and it has all these psychedelic colors on it that i really love this red and blue and green and they're hugging and i ordered this painting from china so okay so here we go i have my painting i have my i ordered my painting i made my letter and at work during the pandemic the beginning of the pandemic I started telling all my friends that as I was going to lunch, I started putting lipstick on and makeup. And they're asking me, why are you putting lipstick and makeup on? And I said, well, because my fiance is outside. <laughs> and all the girls are like, really, your fiance is outside? We didn't know you had a fiance. And I said, well, I don't have a fiance. He's outside. I'm going to meet my fiance. 
and I'm going to get married. And we're going to have this huge wedding, and it's going to be on the water. Yes, it's going to be on the water, and everybody's coming, so I want everybody to start looking for dresses. And at that point, work was a little slow because it was the beginning of the pandemic. So, of course, all the girls get on the computer, and they all start looking at dresses. So I have one doctor in one room. She's looking at dresses. She's like, Rosa, how about this dress? And the other one. Yeah, she's that so, outside. Everybody yeah. looking wow. at dresses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we're, 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 doing, we're doing color schemes. Yeah. We're doing, you know, the color scheme. And then I want to do an all white day, you know, the before the party. And I'm planning this whole thing. My secretary comes from the from the front. She comes to the back. And she's like, what is, what's everybody doing back here? Oh, we're looking for dresses for Rosa's wedding. Rosa, you, you're going to get married? I said, yes. When? I don't know. <laughs> Did you, do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> no, I don't. But I'm going to get married. And so we, we started doing that at work. So we said that I'm going to get married on the water. And everybody in my job is going to gonna come. And we got a color scheme. Blue is my color. And I went home. I packed this this suitcase. <laughs> See, I, I did all these things. Yeah. I packed this suitcase. And then this, I started going shopping to Macy's. I was a little depressed because of the pandemic. So I said, you know, I'm going to order some stuff. So I ordered a bathing suit, a couple of summer dresses. And I ordered this stuff. And I packed the bag. And I leave the bag by my door. And that is because when I meet my fiance, he's going to take me on a really nice vacation. <laughs> and we're going to go to the beach. So I do all of these things. So my, my picture frame comes home. And I thought I ordered one frame. It came in five pieces. And I don't know how to hang up a frame. I mean, I, I'm by myself. I don't yeah. know how to hang up a frame. So this picture comes in five pieces. And you know how you have to align it and hang it? I can't yeah. do yeah. that. I can't do that. You got to be like you own this triangle. Yeah. You still align everything. I can't do this. So <laughs> if, 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 you, if you don't met truth at that time, you would have hooked you up right away. Oh, well, so. <laughs> but, but, but as far as the story... Good to you, did, yeah. you, did share, you did share the story with me, yes. so so it worked out perfectly. So I I, I so I, I bought so I put the frame on the floor and I said, oh my god, I can't put this frame together. So I actually had a friend of mine, someone that I, uh, that I was seeing, and but it wasn't that serious. It was just someone that had just come over for dinner, and he happened to see my frames on the floor, and he said, "What's there?" And I said, "Oh, it's a picture." So I opened it up and I lighted it, and I said, "Oh, this is pretty." He didn't offer to put up my frame. So I said, okay, no problem. That frame stood on my floor for eight months. Eight months, I could not put that frame up. I couldn't put it up. I couldn't get anybody to put up. So um, I, during the pandemic, we started a, a dance group and we started dancing. So I met this really nice young man. Very nice. And we became friends. We became really, really, really friends. We started dancing together, practicing together. And one day he came over to my house to practice. And he saw my picture frame on the floor. And he said, what's that? I said, it was a picture frame. So I showed it to him and he said, oh, that's really nice. And he left. And the next week and he came by to visit me again and he bought his drill and he bought nails and he bought some tape and he put up my frame. And I thought, wow, this is so nice. And we started talking and, you know, one thing led to another. He became my boyfriend. And one day we were um, in my room and we were lying down and we were hugging and he looks at the picture and he says, oh my God, that picture looks like us. Because in the picture it's a man and it looks like him and there's a woman hugging and it has all of these psychedelic colors and those colors, he has tattoos on his chest and all those colors are on his beautiful tattoos. The, the, would, you, would you mind um, mm -hmm. sharing that, that, that image with us? Yes, yes, could, yes, put, yes. I'll put it, it up. Put it, yeah, because we, we put definitely. it up in the, for that if the viewers yes. can see. Yeah, and, so can yeah, see but too. I didn't realize this. I really didn't. When he said that, because I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him about the, the, the letter that I have on my nightstand. I didn't tell him about the I didn't tell him about the picture. I didn't tell him anything. I didn't tell him about the girls at, at my job. And when he said, that's us, like I got chills. And I was like, oh my God, that, that's us. That really is us. So um, that's how I manifested him. Actually, we, um, we just got engaged. And Congratulations. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. And all the girls in my job, my, the, one of the doctors in my job, she started manifesting because of this. <laughs> that's now, awesome. Really, Yo, that's, yeah, she yeah, yeah. Yeah. People. that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's, it's working. Yeah. Yeah. You can see <laughs> it's yeah, working. She started manifesting and she tells me, you know, Rosa, I thought you were crazy. I really thought you were crazy. And I was like, oh, whatever. I'm going to look for a dress. And now I know. I can't believe it because we actually are booking our um, the venue 
for our wedding in Jersey, and it's on the water, on the Hudson. Mm. So, you know, it's like everything's coming together and all the girls at my job, of course, they're coming and they're so excited about it. And everybody's like, oh, my God, you manifested. You, you invited like, me yes. to the wedding, right? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, you're okay, come right, to the wedding. Right, right, but cool. at that point when he <laughs> said, my God, this this is us. I took my piece of paper out and I showed it to him and he read it and he was like, wow, this is I mean, not to be conceited or anything, but this is me. Like, everything on this paper is me. And I was like, yeah, I know. I manifested you, honey. What do you think? You think this was a, a coincidence? <laughs> so actually, we, sh we should be getting married in about three or four months. And I learned how to set boundaries. I, s I, I finally learned how to set boundaries, which is the most exciting part of this, that we're both dancers, and when we go dancing, we go in, we dance the first dance together, and then it's like, I'll see you later. He knows that I'm passionate about it, and I go and I dance with everybody there. I have friends, and there's no jealousy. There's no insecurity, which for me is it's, it's amazing. It's, it's just it's, 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 it's a blessing. Yeah, yes, it's, it's a blessing. It's mm -hmm. uplifting for me, and I can finally be my true self. Sometimes I meet people. I know that this happened with me and Nate. I meet people and sometimes I'm compelled to say something to them. I don't know what it is. And sometimes I could feel somebody's energy. Yeah. And this happens constantly to me. And with my fiance now, he, because there's no jealousy, because there's no insecurity, he's not like, I, I don't feel like I'm claustrophobic. I don't feel like, I, like he's keeping me in a box. Yeah. Sometimes we're together and I'll meet someone and it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. I don't see people as men or women. Sometimes I feel that someone needs something said. Sometimes I feel someone needs a hug. Sometimes just a little, a kind word can change somebody's life. You don't know what somebody's going through. And sometimes just a little bit of love, a little bit of kindness goes a long way. And he understands that. And I'm able to do this. And to me, that is the, the greatest gift. He's just giving awesome. me the greatest gift. No, no, that's awesome, man. So now, I mean, like... Uh, that's basically the power of manifestation. Um, you know, like, I, and sometimes, you know, there, there are there are people out there that they do try the manif you know, to do the manifestation. But you have it's it's about the foundation. Like, it's everything counts, even your surroundings. Like, what are you surrounded with? Because you might try to manifest something, but then they, they could be somebody. Like, it could even be like, let's say your neighbor or something yes, it could yes. be distorting that. So yes. you have to, it, like. You have to recognize, mm -hmm. hey, what is stopping me yes, from yes. wanting to and manifest? What you want. yeah. But also, you have to be in a good place. Yes. Oh, That's yeah. also. If you're in a bad place, you're just going to manifest more bad things because we're all, all energy. You understand? So if my energy is low, I'm going to attract low, more low energy. Yeah. So you have to be... You have to be in a good place. You have to come to terms. You have to say, okay, I am in a great place right now. I am in a great place. I am happy. Thank you for everything. I want nothing else. And I live in gratitude. I live in gratitude and, I'm, and I appreciate everything. And I, but I would like this. If it doesn't happen, it's okay. You know, sometimes the universe has ways of giving you things that you didn't even know you wanted. There are certain things that, that, I, that, that I got with this person that i would have never asked for because i didn't know to ask for it yeah see yeah. i i've always because i've always seen toxic relationships my mom was a divorced mom my aunts were divorced i never really saw uh, a loving relationship i don't know what that is yeah yeah no we do have that that problem in within our our, our yeah, community yeah. Like yeah we do see a lot of uh toxic relationships mm -hmm. I, I i didn't know what to ask for i didn't know so actually i'm learning and the universe is just giving me things that I never even would have thought to ask. Yeah. So I, I'm blessed. But I do have to say that I do set boundaries. There are times when, you know, because not everything is perfect, of course. Okay, and yeah. he's learning and I'm learning also. And thank God that he's on the same path that I am. And he believes that in manifestation and in energy. And there's sometimes, there's times that we have conflicts, but we learn how to communicate. Yeah. We communicate, so and this yeah. is new for me. It's so new for me because I didn't know how to communicate. So we'll sit and we'll communicate, and I'll say, okay, this is what I want. Oh, my God, I actually want something. This is what I want. This is what's going to make me happy. This is for my path. And then I'll ask him, what do you want? 
What, what do you want? I want you to be happy, whether it's with me or without me. I want you to be happy because I love you unconditionally. That And that's that what you just said is very important, right? Because you have to, uh, when you're in a relationship with somebody, like it is, it's best if you're, you guys are happy within yourself. Yes. Right. So once you're happy within yourself, now you could get into a relationship a understanding that, you know, like you're coming in with love, right? With true love. Yes. R- rather than, you know, like with uh, being needed. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes. And, um, and then, you know, like saying that, like, you, hey, look, I'm going to love you whether it works out or yes. if it doesn't yes. work out. Yes. That's, that's very important. I mean, I believe those type of relationships are the ones that are going to last even longer. Unconditional because, yeah. love. That's mm-hmm. what we're here to learn. Unconditional love. And unconditional love is with no expectations, I want nothing in return from you. All I want is for you to be happy. And you know what? If we can both be happy together, then we're blessed. Yeah. So that that that's what I'm that's 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 what I'm looking towards. Yeah, no, that's awesome. It's exciting. That's, yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, you just you just came from from a trip, right? Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, we did take me away. We went to Mexico for one month. Yeah, and I've never taken such a long vacation before, and it was amazing. I went over there to meet his family, and I absolutely love them all, and I bonded with them. And um, yes, we went. We met his family. We traveled Mexico. Mexico is a beautiful country. And um, yes, we're going to, we're kind of, I'm back. He's still not back yet. He's going to be back in a couple of weeks. And um, we're going to, we're planning our wedding. So this is another exciting um, chapter in our life. I also like to say that um, a lot of people, when they get into relationships, they, you always say you better half, but there is no better half. You have to be a complete person. You have to be in a good state, you have to be happy in order. How can you love someone if you don't love yourself? So the, the most Oof. important thing is love yourself. Love yourself. Don't let, set boundaries. Set boundaries for, you, for emotional health, for physical health. It's okay to say no. It's okay. Don't let people impose on you. How important is, because um, when you're saying like set boundaries, right? Are we talking about sending boundaries to yourself, Right. Like because, you know, um, you know, like uh, we people have the misconception that when you say sending boundaries, like, oh, I'm sending boundaries to this partner. No, you're setting boundaries to yourself, to, uh, to anybody. And then you're sharing yes. and then you're sharing this mm-hmm. with. Yes. The, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Well, actually, my daughter taught me about boundaries and yeah. my son, my daughter mm-hmm. left the house when she was 18. Mm-hmm. And um, I, 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 I as an overprotective mom codependent mom I actually was I don't know if I want to say I I was teaching her kind of it was going to be a cycle and she recognized it which I'm super proud of her she recognized it at a very young age and she said you know this is toxic I need to find my own place my own way and I can't do what you want me to do so at that point she went on her own and she taught me unconditional love because it was without me. She figured she, I was toxic, which I was toxic. I wanted to kind of run her life and yeah. tell her that what, she, what her path was should not have been her path. That yeah. she should do it the way. Because I figured, you know, I have more life experience. Mm-hmm. I don't want her to get hurt. I have her best interests at heart. But you know what? I can't live her life. And she understood that she has to follow her own guiding system. Yeah. She has to follow her own path. And I wasn't allowing it. So at that point, she said, you know what, mom? You're toxic. <laughs> Just like yeah. that. She said, you're toxic. And um, I'm going to go and follow my own path and do my own thing. Yeah, no, and, and you, like, the best teacher is life. Oh, yes. Oh, definitely life, yeah, yes. You and, you know, sometimes it. as parents, you think you know everything, but we don't know everything. We don't mm-hmm. know everything. And we can learn a lot from our kids. And, actually, I learned unconditional love from her. I learned that, okay, she doesn't want to be with me. She doesn't want me to help her. But I love her. And as long as she's happy and she's mentally okay... Yeah. physically okay I'm okay so I let her go and that was the big step for, for, for a mom that was a big step yeah. but she learned very early on how to set boundaries and I actually I learned from her <laughs> hey, no it happens that's, that's dope man so you now know? I set boundaries I, there's something that I don't like I stop and I say oh no that made me feel uncomfortable and I don't want this 
And it's okay to say that you don't want this. It's okay. It's, and also it's okay to say, you know what? These are my boundaries and this is what I want for myself. And if you don't agree with it, it's okay for you to leave. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because in the, you know, in the end of the day, I have to love myself. And I have to be comfortable. And I don't want to resent you. And I don't want to hate you. So it's okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, no, that, that's that's awesome, man. Um, uh, This was an awesome segment today. You know, like I do appreciate everything that you had to say. You know, um, there's a lot of uh, truth to, to, to what you gave in. And you're giving out a lot of knowledge, especially to our younger audience, right? Because... Um, we are going through a we are going through a phase right now. Like a lot of people are becoming like single right now, and we try we gotta try to find a way to communicate with people to because ultimately we do want to end up being together. Yes. We want we want to create that a uh, family um yes. you know environment because yes. it's it's it, it just see it it seems like that's the the best remedy when yes. you're together. But you wanna understand on how to be happy with yourself definitely and also yeah. family doesn't have to be blood mm -hmm. see just because they're yeah. your family members if they're toxic yeah. and you you don't feel good about yourself you have to distance yourself and unconditional love is not that i don't love you i love you yeah but i love myself more mm -hmm. so i'm gonna distance myself from you that's it but i still do love you yeah yeah but i'm not a doormat Exactly. So yeah. that's what we have to. That's where the boundaries come in. Mm -hmm. That's where the boundaries. And it's it's the most important thing for self love. And if we don't love ourselves, then we can't love anyone else. And family doesn't have to be blood. Family could be a friend. Yeah. It doesn't. It not a man, not a woman. It could just you can make your own family as long as you have that support and you have people that love you. Then you know. Then you're blessed. Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. So, can I ask you? Um, do you have? I mean, besides dancing, right? Yes. Do you have any other hobbies? Because, oh my goodness, dancing is one of my biggest <laughs> hobbies. You yeah, know no, that. I know, I know, I know. I'm obsessed. I love to dance. Um, my other hobbies are, actually, I love to cook. <laughs> I do. I, I like to cook. I like to cook. I love to travel. Actually, we're manifesting. We went when we were in Mexico. We were in this little dirt road. And um, we found this frame, this picture frame that I had to buy it. And we put it up in our little house in Mexico. And the picture frame is a couple hugging in front of the Eiffel Tower because our, our dream honeymoon is to go to see the Eiffel Tower. Mm. And in this picture that I found in Mexico, dirt road, they shouldn't have a picture of Eiffel Tower. So it has the Eiffel Tower with a woman and a man hugging. And there's this big like tree and I love the tree of life. So they have this big tree and the leaves are blue, which that's the color of my girl's dresses for my wedding. Mm. So I saw it and I was like, oh my God, this is my manifestation. Yeah, yeah, man. That's <laughs> so your... of course I bought it and I put it up and that's my manifestation. And I do, I want to travel. We love to hike. We love to travel. We also want to, um, but we want to uplift people. We want to spread love. We want to just help humanity yeah, i should probably do a future podcast yes yes <laughs> yes we do we want to you know i do a lot i read a lot and i actually share a lot of my books that i read with um people just uh, uplifting uplifting yeah, books yeah. um self-help books i think everybody but i just want to be there for them eventually we would like to open up some type of like a community center yeah. a community center where there's positivity i remember there was a time that i i um i was volunteering in a soup kitchen and i didn't like certain things that were going on in that soup kitchen and one of the things that i didn't like was the fact that they had the people in the soup kitchen and then they made everybody go back outside into the cold and stand online then to come back and feed them and they had the news on the whole time that was there. The news, I mean, how depressing is that? The news was how many people got murdered yeah, and yeah. the wildfires and how many numbers. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is terrible. I mean, these people, first of all, they have no place to live. They're they're treated in a way that is just, it's not nice. Not humane, and yeah. It's not humane. And also, all this negativity around. So we wanted to open up like a, maybe some type of little area a safe place where adults and children can come where there's maybe nice music there's painting there's the arts there's communication there's every positive influences yes yes instead of 
you know, the news on everything that's negative in this yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome, man. And look, man, and if if we uh, if you can manifest in the future mm-hmm. and we can help out with that, yeah, you know what I, I mean? Would like, love it. Yeah, man, because we're just trying to create a foundation. We're trying to create a circle of, of, of people who are just positive. Yes, yes. Because this, this is what we want for, for, for our community as well, you know, for well, us and our community. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for being the light. Thank you for uplifting humanity. Thank you. It's needed. And you know what? You plant a seed. With every podcast, you plant a seed. And sometimes you think people are not listening, but but subconsciously it goes in. And one person can make a change and they can reach two people. And then that those two people can change, reach five people. Yeah. And it's just a trickle effect. Yes, yes. And well, I see beautiful. that happening. So thank you so much. That's beautiful, man. Thank you, Mom. Hey, thank you for coming in. And, you know, like, uh, you want to... No, yeah. like, us. <laughs> No, before we end this, I usually tell, do you have like any type of advice that you would like to give to our listener? My advice is, I always say to myself, when, when, I'm, when I am put in a situation, I always ask myself, the first question is, am I, am I answering you with love? You understand? With love. And if you ask yourself, there would never be war. If you asked yourself that, yeah. Yeah. there would never be a crime if you asked yourself, is it love? Is it love for another human being? You understand? Yeah. yeah. We all yeah. gotta have See? love. Yeah. So that's it. I, I, I tend to try to, and when, when I'm in certain situations, I try to not judge. Yes. Not yeah. judge. Not judge people because we don't know um, people's circumstances. We don't walk in their shoes. Exactly. We don't know mm. how, how they were raised. Sometimes people do things that are not nice people do terrible things but then you have to look back to their uplift their upbringing and maybe they went through certain things so sometimes just showing people a little bit of kindness goes a long way sometimes people were never shown kindness and when you show it to them they 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 finally realize oh my god there are good people out there yeah, yeah. just don't don't reciprocate the energy that's given to yes, you yes you know, gotta like, get that nice energy as yes. a thing yeah, don't judge gotta, yeah. don't judge don't judge you know you just always try to be true to yourself try to be true to yourself and try to just spread love that's awesome that's awesome thank you yeah. for being a guest and like i would say if you like what we're doing get a friend and a family known we're going to be on Level Up, com. If not, you could follow us on um, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We got uh, um, even uh, uh, the, Samsung the, Podcast. The Apple Podcast, too. Yeah, the Apple Podcast. There's too many, bro. Yeah, it's a lot. Yo, look, man, there's no excuse for you guys to not find us our content. Yeah, we're trying so to give knowledge. Yeah. Well, I found you. Thank you very much. And I was <laughs> super excited, Nate, and I just had to come. <laughs> <laughs> nah, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Thank I, you. I, I do appreciate you coming in. So, hey, guys, with that note, man, I'm going to give you guys uh, deuces. All right? And peace. <laughs>